Let's talk some side hustle ideas and what I would personally do if I had zero dollars and wanted to get started and quite frankly, go from broke to rich. Real quick on that word rich, I don't mean in a savage, greedy way. I just mean rich in the sense of freedom. Being able to sleep at night because I'm not stressing out about bills and debt and all that sort of stuff. That's what I mean by rich. So I'm not saying that in a greedy way at all. But I also want to focus on that because that is the first step. That is the first thing that I would do and that you need to do within the sequence. And that is what, well, you just got to what? Believe, right? You want to believe that, hey, you know what? I, I, I am broke right now. I am poor right now. But you know what? The good news about that is the person in the mirror can also change that. So yeah, I believe that I can do it and I'm going to do it. So that's just a step one. You gotta believe that you can actually do all this. The second key thing here though is that you gotta realize and focus on the word temporary. I don't think that's how you spell it, but it doesn't matter. Temporary just means what? Short term, right? It, doesn't, it means that you're not gonna be doing what I'm gonna talk about the rest of your life. It is a means to an end. It's a strategy to go from point A to some sort of bigger goal. So you also need to realize that, you know what? And this will make a little bit more sense later on, but it's just temporary, okay? It's just going for a little bit. Luckily in this list, nowhere are you gonna have to worry about spelling because that would not be good. All right, so that's the second thing you need to do. Now the third thing you need to do, part-time job, okay? I don't care if you're mowing your neighbor's lawn, flipping burgers at McDonald's, I don't care what you're doing, get a part-time job because what we're talking about here, remember, is a side hustle. Side hustle literally means something that you're doing outside of something else. So if you are literally broke, if you are literally starting from nothing, which is where the vast majority of people start, which is where when I started back in the day, you gotta, let's just first get some money. So part-time job, that's the next, and I don't care what it is. Minimum wage, that's fine. Why is that fine? Number two, temporary. It's not like I'm telling you, you're gonna be working at McDonald's for the next 50 years flipping, no, it's temporary. It's part of a bigger strategy here. So you gotta go get a job. And then number four, you gotta realize and kind of pinpoint. So let's just get that. We are looking to pinpoint. Now, what are you actually looking to pinpoint? Well. And all this, this whole idea came from, uh, I, I, I have an investment property, cottage, whatever you wanna call it. But a couple of weeks ago, I was up there and I'll put, on a, a put up an image so you can see, we filled this massive dumpster. And it was very, very annoying. It was not pleasant. And it was a situation where, I mean, my time could have definitely been better spent as you're, you'll see here, but it was one of those circumstances where I don't know, do we wanna throw that away or do we wanna keep it? Should we hold on to that or is it going to the dumpster? So I actually needed to be there, so I just did the work while I was there. And while I was doing it, I was thinking, man, this is annoying. I mean, yeah, it was a good little workout, but it was just, it wasn't pleasant. I mean, who wants to carry heavy stuff and you got, you know, throw it in the dump? It's just annoying. Nobody likes to do manual labor where you have to just mindless pick up stuff, throw it away. It's, just, it's annoying, but this is, where the opportunity lies. And this is what I was thinking, you know what? This is what I, I actually would do. And then the other light bulb, you know what? I'm actually gonna share this on YouTube. So the way this all works, and this is nothing complicated, but I have a cheat sheet up there just in case, you know what? I'm not even gonna try to act like I'm doing all this memory. I jotted this down because this is not like some from sort of economic tech. This is from my textbook up here. But the way this works is you have, so let's get this. Little thing drawn up. We have over here value. And then down here you have annoyance. So that's what we're gonna be judging here. And the part that, and the way that these two work together is you have this, okay? And this first part over here, so we'll call it from here, here, is there is not enough annoyance. So this range here, not enough annoyance, meaning, yeah, you know what, this is, this is annoying, 
This could be anything. And I'm gonna get more into the details. Uh, yeah, this is annoying, but there's a but. And the but is, but it's not annoying enough to actually wanna pay somebody else to do it because it's so annoying. So that's one part of it. The other area on this curve is over here. And this is where there's not enough worth. Meaning, yeah, that, 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 that's annoying. That is really annoying. But I mean, really, in order to get over that, I have to pay that much? Okay, it's just, yeah, that, that's, just, that's just paying, no, I, I can't pay that much. I mean, it's, it's super, super annoying, but I mean, I, I literally can't afford that or it reaches the point where it's just, yeah, that's just, it's not enough worth for me to actually wanna fork out money from my own wallet for that. And then there's this area here where all the opportunity lies. So green here is by design. And right here, we have the sweet spot. SP, the sweet spot. And this is where something occurs where it's annoying. And it's annoying to the point where the people start to question and say, you know what? My time would be better spent doing something else. Or just flat out, I really don't like it at all, so I'm willing to spend money for it. And people will pay you for in better terms, kind of grunt labor. Just stuff that it, it just doesn't make any, it, it either doesn't make any sense, right? Because time is money. So for some people, it's like, no, it's literally not worth my time to go do that. Or other people are just like, no, I despise that so much and I can afford it that I want to pay someone else. So that's the area that we're looking to operate. And this is also where, what I, like I said, what I would do is I would straight up sell my time and grunt labor. Whether you wanna call it a dumpster, now when I say dumpster business, I don't mean the business of delivering dumpsters. I mean the business of filling those dumpsters. Offering up, talking with people, saying you know what, let me fill up that dumpster for you. That's manual labor, that's grunt work. That is annoying. I mean, do you really wanna do all that? Let me do it for you. And you know what, in many situations people will say, well yeah, my time is more valuable than that. And you know what? As of right now, like I said, if you're broke, then your time, no, again, temporary. Your time, the goal here is for you to eventually get to the state where you're like, yeah, you know what? My time is now so valuable that I'm willing to pay somebody else. But in this you know, strategy, you're not there yet. So yeah, your time is going to be worth some amount. But this is the key is when you find that sweet spot, you could say, you know what, you have that big dumpster, in the back of your mind, do the numbers. Okay, I, I think that could probably take me five hours. You know what, let's say at a full day, eight hours. And you know what, I wanna make $10 an hour. So you know what, hey, hey mister, and I'm gonna tell you where these people, where you can find these people, that's the next step here. But say, hey, you know what, I'll give you $80 to fill that dumpster. M most people are gonna be like, deal, deal. 80 bucks to fill that, fill that dumpster, done. But no, 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 you didn't do it right. I mean, what about if you valued your time at $20 an hour? So 20 times eight hours, because remember, you think it's gonna take you eight hours. That's $160. You know what, I'm gonna charge you $160. Again, that's a no-brainer deal. Of course, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll give you 160 bucks. My time, is, my time over eight hours is definitely worth more than 160 bucks. Let's go again, how about $30? $30? and then you do it by eight hours, now that would tell you charge the person 240. Do you see what I'm doing here? Figure out how long you think it will take you and then assign a value. Who knows, maybe you could get $50 per hour. That would only be $400. Now depending on the job, you may all of a sudden start getting over here, right? So you gotta find that sweet spot. Because at some point, somebody's gonna be like, I mean, you could sit there and charge them $1,000 an hour, right? And be like, well, I think it's gonna take me eight hours, so $1,000 an hour, I'm gonna charge this person $8,000 to fill up the dumpster. At that point, it's like, unless it's Bill Gates or somebody, you're gonna be like, no, that's, I'll just do it myself if, it's gonna, if you're gonna charge me $8,000. But there's some sort of wiggle room in there where even at like said $50 an hour, I mean, that's $400 in one day that you could put in your pocket. Now, is it gonna be annoying? Yes, might you get some blisters? Might you poke yourself a little bit? Yeah, you might, but $400 in one day or better yet, $50 per hour? That's, I, I, that's something that you could build off of. 
And again, number two, all this is just temporary. Okay, great. Let's Clay, who is going to pay me $50 an hour? Who is going to do that? Let's go to my desktop and I'm going to show you the next step here. And that is going to be the find. So where could you find somebody? Because remember, you've now pinpointed this area, but where could you find somebody? So like I said, let's go to my desktop and I'm going to walk you through exactly how to do it. All right, welcome to my desktop here. Who are we trying to find? The reason I would find these people is because, well, I am these people and I can say with full certainty, in fact, I've done it in the past, I would pay for your labor, I would pay for your time to fill up a dumpster, to clean out a house, to just pick up, get trash out of the way. And those people are real estate investors. I myself do invest in real estate. I've done many projects. And like I said, I have paid people to fill up, uh, you know, clean out houses. You know, if I've had to take some of my houses back and there's trash in there. Uh, other things just, you know, there's demolition. So stuff needs to be picked up. But I have paid people to fill up the dumpster. Now, I, I pay for the dumpster and the people just show up to fill it. But yeah, I, I've done it. So this is not theory, this is reality because like I said, I, I've done it myself. So that is who we are looking for, real estate investors. Now I would also encourage you to get creative. I'm not saying that real estate investors are the only people that would pay you to fill up a dumpster, but this is definitely a great starting point to consider. So how do we find real estate investors? Well, there's some terminology out there that you need to know in the world of real estate investing, and that is a RIA. And a RIA, all that stands for is a real a state investing association. In other words, it's it's basically a club. It's basically a, a you know a group of people that come together to network, to share services, to just well that's what networking is, right? You scratch your back or you scratch my back, I'll scratch your type thing. And it's a a, a circumstance where there can be great value from it because it's all like-minded people that are getting together to share their services. So how can you actually find these RIAs? And once again, with when it comes to the search engine, just get a little creative. Maybe real estate investing club, real estate investing, just type out association. But in this situation, I'm just gonna do because I live in the state of Michigan. So RIA Michigan. And you'll see all these different, di so yeah, I mean, you could just do RIA, your city. Like I said, get creative, but I'm gonna go with RIA, not MI, I meant Michigan. Let's fix that. There we go. So you can see right away. And very top one, let's click on Michigan Real Estate Investors. So here we have the site, and of course, you always wanna make sure these things are active. I mean, is this some sort of dead site or not? But this is definitely very active. Check that out. Next class right up there. Um, and as of the recording of this video, I, I can tell that's very current. Uh, so right here, there's just the Michigan Real Estate Investors. And you can just scroll through the site, you can see this one's offering a bunch of different uh, services. And right here, they're talking about, oh, all right, and this is what you should be looking for. Not necessarily classes, but right here. Join us for our next monthly meeting. So doors open, 5.15. So it looks like they have maybe a little uh, speaker. And then, let's see. There we go, So this, and this is what you're really looking for. So what happens at these meetings? Uh, this is nice. So you can talk, uh, you know, with, with, it sounds like they have speakers to just get people in, but then afterwards, you can just, and where's that, where's, uh, so yeah, there it is, right there. Networking, that's what it's all about. Right there, meet vendors. And guess what, you are a vendor. You Vendors just sell stuff. And what are you selling? You are selling your time. Your time to do what? Your time to fill up a dumpster. Your time to just clean up. Your time to help some sort of real, invest, real estate investor in some way or another. I mean, like I said, this will get your foot in the door, but then get creative and I'm just making this up off the top of my head, maybe there's some sort of roofer that's there and the, the person says, yeah, I'm a roofer, I'd rather just be putting the shingles on the roof. I don't like to have to clean up the mess that I create when I tear off the old roof. But hey, you know what? What would you charge me to fill up this dumpster? There you go. You didn't necessarily go up there thinking you'd be working with the roofer, but all of a sudden, you're working with the roofer and you're selling your time for definitely well above you know minimum wage. But right there, that's what it's all about. You go there, meet vendors, but once more, you're not the real estate investor, you're the vendor and you are selling your time. And that is how this works, is in all cities, 
I, I shouldn't say that. I mean, if you live in a city with 10 people, I don't know if they have a real estate, but you know what? The big cities, all of these have these, and you can start from, like I said, just doing a running a search for your city, running a search for your state. Uh, you know, if you're outside of the United States and watching this, just running some sort of search for your local area and figuring out where are these meetings happening, what time are they happening, and you go there and you just network. You get there and you are the vendor. You sell your time. So, real estate investors. Once again, just to end this portion, this is not theory on my part. I'm a real estate investor myself. I have paid and will continue to pay people for their labor to fill up dumpsters, to clean out houses, because once again, at this point, and this is your goal, but at this point for me, that's just not worth my time. I have better things I can be doing, but when you're just getting started, and if I were just getting started, then yeah, of course that's worth my time. I wanna do this sort of stuff so that I can you know, start to you know, grow and build and build. So real estate investors, that's who you wanna find and this is how you find them. Let's go back to me at the chalkboard. And just to reiterate and note again, I'm not saying that's the only way you can go about it, but I mean, get creative, right? Who are some people out here that might fall into that spot? And once again, it doesn't necessarily need to be filling up a dumpster. Maybe it's uh, just somebody that needs something cleaned up every now and then. The point is, who is out there that has annoying tasks attached to what they're trying to do, and there might be some wiggle room in there for you to, to get a nice little hourly wage that's well above minimum wage. Once again, I realized, well, I mean, if I, if, if I have to go to that meeting, that means I have to drive, and that means I have to put gas in my car. That is true. That's why you got a part-time job, to help fund this side hustle. So everything is covered. There's a reason why you gotta get that part-time job first, because yeah, you might have to buy yourself a nice little shirt. Yeah, you might have to buy yourself some nice pants just so you, you give yourself the professional appearance. You're gonna have to pay for some gas. That car needs some insurance. That's all true. That's why you have a part-time job. Here's the most important part though. Number six, listen. And while I talked about real estate investors and just people in that uh, you know sector, those are people that can really benefit you if you just listen, if you just ask questions. So I should really say listen and ask. Because yeah, you know what, ask them a question. Hey, why are you doing that? Just get creative with it. And that's gonna take, I mean the value in that, that's pretty crazy. So just listen. I mean think about it, you're getting paid to network with people that are successful or that are you know in the same mindset of you in terms of maybe they started off with nothing and I assure you, if you show up and you walk them through all this and say, you know what, I'm just getting started, I don't have anything, I'm just looking to start at the ground up and build. People that, are, people that have hustled before, they appreciate that. They'll say, yeah, I'll hire you. In a lot of situations, they'll probably even hire you more than what you're worth just because they, they wanna help you out that much more. And then the final one, because I know what you're thinking, because this is what I would be thinking, because I am a, a relatively shy person, but so this is just, of the whole process, the bonus here has to do with your comfort zone. Wait, Clay, I've gotta go and talk with these professional real estate investors, these professional business owners, these people that are maybe worth hundreds of thousand dollars, if not millions of dollars. I gotta go actually shake hands and network with them and, and, and tell them what I'm offering. That's pretty scary, isn't it? Heck yeah, that's scary, but you know what? That's a good life skill to have. Step out of your comfort zone, make yourself pee your pants a little bit because you're nervous. Don't worry, the pee becomes less and less over time. And this is not me just talking in theory. Like I said, I'm shy. And then I, now I have a podcast that's up over, I don't know, 200 some episodes. And those first few episodes, oh man, that was I was scared. There was some peeing going on. Not really, but it's good for dramatic sake. But I was really nervous. And, but you know what, now it's just, it's a skill. I mean, I still am not very good at talking with people, but you know what? I've, I've improved because I was willing to step out of my comfort zone. So that's the benefit to all this is think about all the skills. You're putting together a business plan. You're doing some math, right? You're trying to figure out how much per hour can I actually charge? And you're building networks with well-qualified people. Plus, you can just listen, ask them questions, and you're gonna get ahead. So that's what I also mean by rich. Rich not in the sense of money, but rich in the sense of experience, connect, you know, connections. That's what networking's all about. Have you ever heard the saying, well, it's kinda who do you know? Well, you know what, start to get to know people. 
And of course the over on, and you gotta do a good job, right? I mean, if you show up and you don't pick stuff up and the dumpster's got stuff hanging out of it and all, well then of course this all fails. So that is an assumption that I'm also making is that you're actually gonna get there out there and, and do the work and do the work the way you say you're gonna do the work. So that probably goes without saying, but I figure I should just mention it. So yeah, that is my side hustle idea that I had was, you know what? This dumpster stuff's really annoying, but you know what? There's a lot of people that need dumpsters filled. Once again, you don't need to go to real estate real investors. You could go maybe put in a, especially a Facebook marketplace, for example. You know, get out there, sell your time, sell your grunt labor. Hey, do you need a dumpster filled up? Hey, do you need some sort of junk removed or whatever? Get out there and just do it and just let people know what they, you know, communicate, figure out, all right, how long do I think that's gonna actually take me? And then assign a price to per hour and there you go. You're, you're gonna start to build a pricing structure and it can really take you far in a hurry. And once again, temporary, okay? So I'm not saying this is the business model for the rest of your life. I mean, who knows, maybe this does lead you into a multi-million dollar dumpster company where you're delivering dumpsters all over the world. I don't know, dream big, right? But this will at least get you started and help you go from broke to being rich. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too, good, way too good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.